What's up guys, Sarah Brenzen here for another video. And today I'm here with my good friend Ty. First time we've seen him in a long time, given all of the craziness that's going on. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about my new instructional that's gonna be all about the leg drag. Guys, I'm at the BJ Fanatic studio filming right now. I've been planning this instructional literally for months. I know that may sound funny to some of you, but I'm a total jiu-jitsu nerd, so on my spare time, I've just been consistently planning, organizing, and structuring it, and I am thrilled with the way it came out. I'm absolutely thrilled. I can guarantee that you guys are gonna get an incredible experience out of this, and you're gonna understand the leg drag. Not to ramble on too much, it's basically gonna discuss the leg drag. We're gonna start with talking about the three different variations of the leg drags and how you can utilize them. We're gonna talk about the concepts and control principles for all three different variations of the leg drag. Then we're gonna talk about using the leg drag from a bunch of different passes, um, X passes, Torianos, over under stack passes, knee slices, folding passes. <clears throat> then after that, we're gonna talk about the specific application of these guard passes against specific guards. So leg drag versus De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva, worm guard, spider guard, lasso guard. Then after that, we're gonna talk about the application of the leg drag from bottom. We're gonna talk about the application of the leg drag as a control position, a pinning position, back attack, submissions. I can't, I'll, I'll keep going on forever because it's over six hours of content and it's gonna be incredible. Today, I wanna to discuss with you guys the three different variations of the leg drag. So there's three variations of the leg drag. The first is gonna be, let's move back just a little bit this way and turn your head over there. Yeah. The first is going to be the staple. So the staple happens. The staple happens when my knee is essentially stapling his knee to the mat. So I'm putting him in a single hip position. So I'm forcing his hip to the mat. Okay. So this is our staple leg drag. There's some very important concepts we have to follow when applying the staple. We want to make sure that our leg is hooking his leg so we can control it. Okay. So some of the things we have to address when doing the staple leg drag is we don't want him to be able to underhook our leg and pull it through to outside Ashi. That's one of the most common counters to the leg drag, okay? Secondary to that, we have to make sure we use our ribs to generate pressure on the top of his quad and keep his leg dragged across our body and pinned to our hip. As a secondary method of control, we're gonna use our arm to also keep his knee there. So we can put our knee in front. We wanna make an elbow knee connection with our arm and keep him pinned. Our right leg is gonna be pinched on his hip and it's gonna be a kickstand, so he can't just roll us this way. You can get away with this, but sometimes they can shove you this way, okay? Now, upper body controls, we're not gonna discuss in this video because that's gonna dictate what we do. Sometimes we're gonna to try to pin his shoulders. Sometimes we're gonna to try to force his shoulder off the mat. It depends on if we're trying to attack the back, control, or pass the guard. So our first variation is the staple. Our second variation is gonna be the shelf or the combat pace. The shelf is gonna be this knee is down, so in this case, right knee left leg is up and I bring his leg across my body and my leg acts as a shelf. Now I make that same rib to knee connection with him. Keep my ribs super tight. He tries to pull his leg through. Just my ribs and my lat should be able to hold it. Now secondary to that, my left arm is also going to make a connection with my leg. So now I have two methods of control holding his leg in place. Okay. Things to be wary of is that he's still gonna maybe try to pummel his leg in and put us in outside Ashi. So we're gonna discuss how we can beat all those things. So this is our shelf method. Again, this is just a very brief overview. And our last method of control is gonna be a standing method, where again, we use our ribs to control our lat. We're here, squatted posture, forward pressure. The standing method of the leg drag is ultimately gonna end up in either the staple or the shelf but it can be a good way to bridge passes so that you can do a guard pass, go to the standing leg drag, use it as a bridge to get to the shelf or the staple position. So there's so many things you can do with the leg drag, but these three variations are going to build the foundation for the instructional that I just filmed. And we're gonna discuss using them from Toriano passes, standing leg drag, staple leg drag, X passes, staple leg drag, circle passes, right? Staple leg drag, and talk about stack passes. There's gonna be so much different things. Discuss it from De La Hiva, discuss it from bottom, rolling leg drags. So I wanted to make a quick video for my YouTube subscribers and all the guys that have been super loyal and following my page. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to keep your eyes out for the instructional. And thanks so much guys for following along. I hope you guys enjoy it. Awesome.